Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy X boss fight video. This time, against the Jacobo Eater. Now, this guy can cause some problems early on. So, the first thing you want to do is use Waka to hit him with a dark attack, blinding him. This will limit his ability to hit you for the first couple of turns or so. Now, you see there where he said you're next and pointed at Lulu. That means, obviously, he's going to attack Lulu. But this attack hits harder than normal. So the second thing you want to do is use Auron to attack with Power Break, halving his strength. And he still hit Lulu for 465. In this instance, obviously, you'd bring in Yuna and then heal up whoever he attacks. It's completely random who he chooses. Now, it's worth pointing out that currently, he can only be damaged by magic and piercing weapons, such as those held by Auron and Kamari. However, when you do 1200 damage, he falls over like that. When he's like this, you can attack him with Tidus and Waka now, and their weapons will do normal damage again. Also, once you've done 500 damage when he's like this, that will push him backwards, as you'll see in a few seconds. Now, the reason for this is because behind the Jacobo Eater, as you can see there, is the edge of a cliff. If you're able to push him off the cliff, you get two level one key spheres for your trouble. You can also just kill him normally, but you won't get the key spheres for doing that. Instead, you'll just get the experience and that's pretty much it. It's worth pointing out as well though, that there is also another cliff in this fight, and it's behind your characters. And if you're not careful, it's entirely possible for him to push you off the cliff instead. If that happens, you lose the fight. You don't die, you just lose and you have to take the long way around. That's the move you gotta look out for when he rushes you like that, because that's when he pushes you backwards. It's also why knocking him off the cliff can be a little bit tricky, and to be honest it's more based on luck than anything else. Because there will be times when you knock him over, push him back, and as soon as he gets up, he will immediately push you himself, just completely negating what you've just done. So, don't worry too much if you can't push him off the cliff. It's, it is kind of difficult to do. Not impossible, but don't keep resetting the game just because you're not doing it. Like I said, you get the same amount of experience regardless of if you kill him or push him off. The only difference is you don't get the level 1 key spheres. Which, to be perfectly honest, at this point in the game, they're not really that useful. I mean, they do become useful later on, but you're not going to miss them at this point. And yes, he does still attack you when he's on his back. It's more of a counter thing, to be honest. But anyway. If you manage to land Auron's power break earlier, then from this point on in a fight, you don't have anything to worry about because like you've probably seen a few times now with the exception of his your next attack he doesn't hit for all that much after he's had a strength hack so you can just treat this like any normal fight from here on really because there's nothing he can do now that can even remotely trouble you especially if you keep knocking him on his back all the time Eventually, he will succumb to your continued beatings and disappear in pretty much the same way that every other fiend you've met thus far has done. Although I have no idea why he chose to do it in such an odd way in this video. I really don't remember that happening before. But oh well, that's another boss down. Well done. Now, as always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.